Hi everyone, this is Kelly from The Truth and Story and this is just a quick little bullet journal and art update because uh, people are quite lovely and interested and uh, enjoy those kind of aspects that are not uh, necessarily tarot related. And so I thought I'd do a quick update video just on what I was doing uh, with my bullet journal as well as some art things that I'm just gonna pop in here as sort of a montage update of those kinds of things. So this is my Leuchtturm, what is these, I don't even remember what these are called, 1917. Uh, and this is what I use to bullet journal in. I am quite love it. Uh, I have only been doing, I don't know, let me look. I have to be careful because sometimes I have client names in here, which in the section I'm going to show you I have taken out. But I want to see when I actually started. I know it wasn't right in January. I'm trying to find my first. I did a bunch of, maybe it was January. February. So it was the end of February when I started doing uh, bullet journaling and uh, I've had some starts and stops. You know, there's been you know, a week or two where I haven't done done very well. I don't worry about it. That's the thing that I really love about the bullet journal is I just start on the next page. If I do a week, miss a week where I don't do anything, you know, when I take it up again, bam, I simply just uh, pick it up. And this isn't really going to go through like single pages that I do, but just sort of how I'm doing things now on more of a plannerly basis. You know, I also sometimes have lists of things and I'm not going into that so much. Uh, so this is August. Um, I started adding color in uh, August. Now I really messed this one up. Uh, what I started using were these Derwent ink tense color pencils and so these are water soluble like watercolor pencils but when you get them wet it is not watercolor it is actually ink and it makes really vibrant colors i just picked up a few singles from an art shop to try i am going to be going back and getting a couple more colors because two of these are earth tones that are actually quite similar so i really only where's my blue one there it is. I really only have the four kind of what I consider primary colors uh, and so I need to get some purples and things like that. So I'm going to add a couple more in uh, of actual bright colors because that's kind of because I'm really enjoying having the color. So I always do a month spread. This is not very filled in at the moment. Uh, so but um, I, I can't. It's one of those things. I know bullet journals do all different ways of being able to do that. I need the months at a time spread uh, for forward planning and for tracking of different things that I keep track of. And so uh, I always do out a month. So this is August. And then I do uh, last week. Oops, I thought I had it muted. But oh no, not muted. There we go. Um, I also very much like to have a weekly, and this is the first week I added color, and I really, this is the first week I did it this way. All, most of all of my ideas are stolen from various places that I simply see. Uh, so a lot of my, my daily tracker is pretty much Boho Berry, which I'll put a link to in the description box. Uh, I'll just kind of Google image search, um, bullet journal weekly or whatever, and just see what pops up. Uh, so, and that's one of the things nice about the bullet journal community. It's a lot of just kind of sharing ideas and it's fantastic. So I do always have to have a weekly, but I don't need a whole lot of space for it. So this is the first week. I've tried various, and then I'm not going to really be able to show you because they're going to have names on them. Yeah. I would have to go through and do some uh, more sticky note any, but I've tried various ones. This is just an update on what I'm doing now, so I'm just going to stick with what I'm doing now. So I have a week on a page over here uh, that just gives me, again, what's going on this week for really basic things. And then on this side, I use for some tracking. I just did this last week, and I really like it. I'm having, I always have difficulties with sleep. I've had insomnia for my entire life, and uh, so I'm used to that, but I'm in a particular bad uh, cycle of bad sleeping and so I decided to do a sleep tracker uh, you'll see that I also track sleep on my dailies but this allows me to put in actually how many hours I got sleep whether I took Benadryl or NyQuil or something uh, to help and then how 
if it, I started to track, you know, was it bad sleep? Was it broken sleep? Like what kind of sleep it was? I'm going to do a little bit more of that this week. And I actually found this to be really helpful. Uh, I also am, I'm doing right now for Tarot, the Tarot Perspective channel, uh, challenge or experience uh, with Patrick and in the 78 stars or cars. I always say stars because I call him. His wife misses stars, his mother's mother stars, <laughs> his son is son of stars. But anyways, uh, I have that tracked uh, where I have also put in the color uh, of the element just to get an overview of that for the week. I also have a tracker for sketching and painting because I really want to be doing something about every day, uh, whether it's a quick sketch, whatever it is. And I did pretty good last week. There were two days that I was uh, busy that I didn't get anything done, but I did pretty well. And then this is just for random to do. Normally I have a lot more going on here, but uh, when I'm doing the dailies uh, regularly, uh, I don't do as much of this because I do it with, I sit down in the morning and kind of do my to-do list for the day. Uh, but if I had something more weekly oriented I needed to keep track of, it would go here. So then we have my dailies. Now I have some names and things stickied off. Um, this is pretty much straight out of Boho Berry's uh, dailies. And it, I like how it works. It, you know, if something works, she's a lot more experienced than I, go with it. Now, normally I do more time, time tracking. She uses these for forward planning of the day, like the night before. Uh, I do it more for tracking, time tracking during the day. Uh, but this week, the first week I was kind of getting back into my dailies, I just was doing the sleep. I didn't get into some of the other tracking uh, yet. I will do that more this week. But it just has, you know, the date. And you can see some, one, two, I missed the, the day three, uh, the third. You know, so I don't worry about it. I just go into the next day. If I didn't do it one day, I move on. Um, I, it, within the dailies, I pretty much use the bullet journal setup uh, of ticking things off and moving things. If I move things, I'll stick an arrow if it got shifted to the next day, uh, whatever it is. Uh, I did uh, put my readings, with, try to put my readings within the days in which I... Uh, I don't remember if I did it as the days I received them. I didn't end up doing it consistently, and it didn't really work for me that way. So I, I went back to the way I was doing it, which I'll show you in a minute. Well, I can't really show it to you, but I'll show you the page. Uh, so I have that going on. So these are just dailies. Uh, and I did pretty good. I think I only missed one day, and I really, it really keeps me organized. I quite like it. I like the adding color in. I'm kind of messing around with those. Those might get a little bit smaller. I eventually do actually want to add like a little sketch. Like I want to start incorporating daily like little sketches, um, you know, even of just something random like a book, just to, you know, work. My, I'm trying to really improve and, and learn how to sketch. And so doing something even little in my bullet journal every day is something that that I really want to start incorporating. So that's my daily. So my weekly, some tracking, uh, my dailies, and then I ended up just doing lists of my current like reading docket and just add to it when it, you know I just go to a next page. That has really worked for me in the past. I was trying to do something different, it didn't work. So that's what this page is. And then of course last night I sat down and set it up for this week. So this is a completely empty week. Uh, so we have my weekly here. We have my sleep, <laughs> bad, choppy, blech, <laughs> even with Benadryl. So that I kind of made sure to put some descriptors of how my sleep was last night. Um, it wasn't good. It was not good, folks. So I have my tarot perspective, my sketching again, because I really liked both of those. My to-do list area. And then, of course, st you know, started for today's uh, daily uh, that I got all that set up last night. So I'm really liking the burst of color. Again, I really don't have a lot of colors. I need at least two more so I have a different color. No, I need three more. So I have a different color for every day of the week uh, of brighter colors besides browns. And these two browns are very close together. Uh, although I do like having a brown for a bad, blucky, choppy sleep days. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm really liking this so far, um, and so this is how uh, I'm currently doing my kind of weekly daily uh, setup. 
Uh, I'm So as I said, the tools that I use for bullet journaling currently, I have one of my fountain pens that I like to have a fountain pen. Um, I use this Micron 005 because I didn't really like it for sketching, and so I'm using it in my bullet journal. That's mostly what I use to write. I have a little you know, metal ruler that I like to keep, and then I have a set of these Derwent water pencils that has a uh, flat uh, brush and then a small and a medium round brush and I love these um, and obviously I would use these also for painting when I was out and about but uh, I keep these right now all bundled together like this with the rubber band around it oops like that all bundled together and that's sort of what I use for bullet journaling at the moment. Uh, so there we have it. That's an update on what I'm doing with my bullet journal. I am still very much addicted to bullet journaling. I love it. It works very well with my style of list making. I, again, I have other pages with lists and things like that, but I just want to show kind of what I'm doing daily. And uh, yeah, loving it and I'm loving the splash of color. So that is my update of my bullet journal. Now here is an update. I wanted to give you an update on my watercolor because people are also wonderful in following that uh, st and it's showing you kind of what I'm using and what I recommend as of right now uh, and what I mostly use, right? I'm still highly recommending having a porcelain palette for mixing paints. And to me, it's the absolute best way to lovely mix paints and actually see what you're getting and not have it beating all up like with plastic and such. I love, I also have a square one, but I love, love porcelain uh, ceramic palettes. So that is that. Um, I have uh, mostly, because I am in the learning stages right now, I am learning to, you know, very specific things at the moment. So I'm mostly working within my journal, which is uh, a watercolor. This is a Moleskin watercolor journal. And so, you, you know, you have all seen this. Uh, I'm trying to go back in and fill in some blank pages with littler sketches. Uh, again, you uh, that's my probably my favorite that I've tr done so far, although I do like some others as well. Uh, so like I'm going to need to go back in with smaller sketches and kind of fill it in. That's my least favorite. Well, both of the two, I had real trouble. Uh, you know, I'm mostly doing tutorials because I'm learning, but I tried, you know, off of images or in... Uh, life to try to do like free sketching and painting and I'm you know not happy with those uh, I did one more recently that I actually really liked how the sketch turned out uh, this was off of a photograph that I took in Kentucky and I loved how the sketch turned out it turned out much more like the style that I'm working on but that there was tons and tons of trees and foliage and I tried a technique with a, a fan brush and you know it the image itself the painting did not turn out well but I was really happy with the sketch uh, for for just doing it off of a, a photo reference, I felt like it was a much improved over the ones I had done before because it's much like the style that I'm trying to learn uh, by Peter Sheeler, kind of that um, style. So I was happy with the sketch, not so happy with this, but it shows the progress. You know, I can go back and look and see, okay, well, back in the beginning, I've still only been doing this for a few months. Uh, so I could say I was not happy with those at all. And then I said, okay, well, at least the sketch was, you know, I was really happy with the sketch. And so, you know, improvement has been made, right? <laughs> uh, but yeah, this type of like ink and watercolor is really what I'm working on the most. Uh, I really am happy with how these Lily of the Valleys, these were much more free form. Um, yeah, I did this, the video of this is on my channel, uh, but the, most of these, like this is a Peter Sheeler, um, and I'll put a link to his uh, tutorial in the description box, uh, his, his channel, he's got a YouTube channel, that's kind of mostly what I'm doing, this was a Peter Sheeler, I love how that, 
no this was actually a photo this was a painting i found online of a little bit more japanesey style and i do like that i think it turned out really sweet uh this is a peter sheeler you can tell his style uh, this was my attempt to do a Peter Sheeler, but with off of my own photograph. Again, happy with the sketch, not so happy with the painting. Um, this was a little barn. I, I do like these little barns. This is a Peter Sheeler. Um, again, just working on my getting more free with my sketching and kind of working on shadows uh, and uh, weathered looks. So I'm happy with it. Uh, that was one I worked on uh, this in a couple of days like sometimes if I don't have a lot of time I'll do the the pencil one day then I'll ink it in and then the next night so I'll do it usually late at night before I go to bed and then last night I painted um did the painting so this was split up over three days because I just didn't have a lot of time uh so most of my uh watercoloring is at the moment in my journal because I am learning I love these big binder clips uh, it lets me clip it to a board or just clip the pages when I'm doing more of a wash. So yeah, I love these big uh, binder clips. Uh, so I keep two of them on my journal. So most of it's going in there. The paper that I'm currently using when I'm not is, Stra is Strathmore uh, 400, Series 400. I know there's a 500. I can't get that around me. So when I'm just doing something like that, I tend to use uh, this. My friend left me a note. She left this, actually. I've been uh, sucking her into watercolor, and she picked one up while she was here, and then she left one for me, which was so sweet. Uh, so I usually use this, and I'm quite happy with this paper. I do have a big piece of arches that I picked up to test, and it is wonderful. But I wouldn't use that just for me, like, learning. So I'm quite happy to recommend the Strathmore. Again, there's different series. This is the highest series. I didn't like some of the lower ones. They're different colors. And I like the 400. And again, I know there's a 500. I simply can't get it. So this is the, the best that I can get. Um which is um, cold press. It is um, 140 pounds, 300 grams. Uh, and so that is probably the, the cheapest paper that I would recommend because paper matters. It really does. It makes all the difference in the world. Paints matter. So that brings us to the paints. Uh, as some people following my Instagram know, I was so excited to... Um, and I think I might have stuck this in a video too. Uh, I was so excited to hit a fantastic deal where all the artist paints at Michael's were 50% off. And so I was able to set up my perfect palette of um, Winsor Newton professional grade um, paint. So those, these tubes, these are tube paints. They usually run at Michael's in the United States for $10 to $14. So some are $10, the cheaper pigments, obviously, and some are a $13.99 for the higher pigments. And so I was able to, to get a 50% off coupon and then a combo. The next day I had a 55 and my mom met me so I was able to finish off this 12. This is actually a palette from a Winsor Newton Cotman, which is the student grade uh, that I was able to get 50% off. And so I had where it was able to get the palette for $15. I popped out the inks out of the half pans and filled them and saved those for other projects, but would then use this to fill with my professional color paints. And I have to say it was the best money spent. I highly recommend Recommend. and you hear it all the time get the best that you can afford because it makes a huge difference in blending colors and not getting muddy colors uh, some of what parts that I was quite frustrated were to do with paint and uh, also um, Pa pa paint and paper and brushes, it does matter. This is all professional grade paints and it makes a huge difference. So this is my, after massive amounts of research um, and what I do, you know, what I paint, uh, this is like my kind of perfect palette. And it's based, a lot of it is based off of Peter Sheeler's. He has a very limited palette. And uh, there were certain colors that I wanted to make sure that I got because he used them a lot. And as well as, you know, a couple of them that I added in that he doesn't necessarily use, but to, to kind of have a balanced palette. So I have Permanent Al Rizian. Now he uses a different, he uses a, um, 
uh, quinacridone uh, fuchsia for the cool red, uh, but I really like uh, Elrizian and it works quite well. Um, so that's what I'm using. I may change that up when this tube is gone, but I, um, and it is a permanent. There is one that is not permanent, but I got the permanent one of, so that of course you have the light vest and it's there and it doesn't, you know, go away. Uh, I have the Windsor Red because he uses that for the warm red. I have New Gumbage, which is a warm yellow, a Windsor Yellow, which is like a lemon cool yellow. I have Viridian, which is I think Flalo uh, Green, uh, which is uh, a cool green, which is you don't generally, I don't ever really use this plain, but it mixes really nice into darker greens. Permanent Sap Green, which he uses a lot. Uh, Cerulean, I simply like having for skies. Uh, yellow ochre, you know, a, a primary uh, earth color that you need, I think. Ultramarine and flalo blue, which is called Windsor blue in the Windsor Newton professional grade. These two blues he uses all the time. Uh, burnt Sienna, I go through Burnt Sienna quite fast because I use these a lot, as well as Yellow Ochre, because I do a lot of landscapey kind of things. And then for Brown, he uses Sapia. And so I have Sapia instead of like a Burnt Umber or a Raw Umber, um, I have Sapia for the really dark brown. Uh, this is fantastic. I instantly noticed a difference in being able to mix like the light grays, definitely the shadow tones that I was just getting muck out of. I was able to mix, like I can mix very easily a really light gray. I can mix darker blue grays that he uses a lot in shadows. Just the mixing just went crazily up graded once I was able to get these. Now I still love the Kiritake colors and I will be using them uh, but you don't get the, you have to be more careful mixing and it's much more of a flat. You get more very, because these are actual pigments and so you get much more of a gradation of color, granulation. Again, the mixing is just amazing. So that, this is my current uh, go-to uh, you know, condensed palette. Eventually, of course, I probably will get a bigger one that was some with some other colors, but I quite like having a 12 palette um, color range because it forces me to mix colors. It forces me to understand how uh, colors mix together to make other better colors or, or other var variety of colors. So I'm really happy with this palette. And, and of course, this is actually very compact to be able to take take with me or use at home. So very happy with that. I want to say with my sale, all my sage couponing and everything and getting the case all together, this cost me about $80 to put together. Uh, and it was well, well worth it. And it came at a bad time. I, I just happened to watch the coupon and I saw 50% off all, because usually it's just one at a time, where this was like 50% off all artisan paints. And I thought, oh my God, I, I, even, I even messaged Bart and I was like, oh my goodness, it's 50%. I would just eat ramen noodles if I have to. And I ended up, first I got nine. I was trying to save some money. And then I thought, oh, silly, silly, silly silly, just finish your 12 pan. So then I went back the next day with another, because that was just a one day coupon. I went back with another coupon and then my mom met me for the coupon and then uh, I was able to get one at Hobby Lobby with a coupon. <laughs> so yeah, I said, you know what, that was silly. Just, just go for it and eat ramen noodles, right? Art is more important than food. So that's that. Uh, I do almost all of my ink sketching either with a dip pen or with the Faber-Castell uh, pit pen in extra small. Uh, I know that many, many people love the Microns for sketching, as does Peter Sheeler. Uh, uh, for me, I really just like these better. I like the tips better. Uh, they don't seem to squish in and get scratchy as fast. I just, this is my favorite. You know, you find what works for you. Uh, for pencil sketching, I am in love with this mechanical pencil, which is a Graphic Gear 500 Pentel 0 0.3, very fine uh, sketching, and I love this. Yes, the inks, the the lead snaps a lot because it's so fine. I don't care. I love it. It doesn't make a, you know, it doesn't make a dark line, but it's very precise. And of course, I'm not doing shading and stuff. This is just for rough sketching, and I 
love it. I will eventually get a couple other thicknesses, uh, but I am absolutely in love with this pencil. So those are my, that's my ink and my pencil, the, my preferred ink and pencil. And then these are the brushes that I use the most. Um, I use a lot of square brushes because uh, Peter Sheeler does, and I'm you know mostly doing his tutorials. Uh, this number six round, and I also am mostly at the moment working at a small size, so I'm not really using large brushes. So I love this uh, number ten flat. Uh, this number six round, uh, I use a lot. Uh, I use this number six flat as well as this little number two flat, which is I mostly use for the bird pictures. It makes fantastic feathers. Uh, and then just for washes, I have this half inch wash because again, I'm not using big paper for the most part. Even if I'm using this paper, it's cut down. I also do really like having a fan brush both for trees and for flicking up grasses. It's just a, a luxury thing, but and this is just a cheap one, but I do like to use it. And then it is, it is nice to have these scrub brushes. This is a very firm bristle, and it lets me get in and lift color sometimes when you make a mistake. So th those two are ones that I don't use as much, but I do like to have them. And so I have them in this Michael's cheaper brand. And so those are kind of what I mostly use for brushes. Uh, and so there we have it. That's an update on my watercolor and kind of where I'm at and what I'm using. And then I have one other thing to add. My newest uh, learning is with uh, pastels. So pastels are, you know, the same thing. It's, it's very, they, and they even call it painting, which uh, kind of, at first I thought, why do they call it painting? Now, since I've did, done this yesterday, or late last night, I do now understand why they call it painting, because you are actually painting with uh, chalk. But this is basically pigment, especially when you get the good things. And I'm gonna say the same thing that I said. I bought this cheaper set because I had a coupon. It was about $7 with my coupon. It was $15 for this Faber-Castell 24 count. It was something I had easy access to and it was cheap and I got it because Katie has wanted to do pastels and we have an art shop that uh, has uh, classes and one of the classes they have is with pastel and so she was interested in it I wasn't sure what I felt about it so I just wanted to get a cheap although these are decent I had they had decent reviews a cheap set just to see what I even thought about the medium and so you basically in watercolor you have pigments pure pigments that are uh, have a binder that bind it together so then the, when you use it to paint you get it wet and you use it to paint uh, the same exact pigments in a good set are used it's just in a different medium it has a different binder and so that you can pick it up in chalk form but it's the same thing as what watercolor pigments are in a good set again and I'm qualifying in a good set um, so I picked this tutorial which I will put a link to in the description box below and I wanted to just see what you know you know, what do I think about this? So I had picked up this box. I kind of swatched some things out on watercolor paper and was messing around, just trying to get a feel for it uh, when the first night that I got it. And then I did end up picking up Strathmore pastel paper uh, because that's what you see a lot. And I will say that it, it does make a difference. I quite like, this is on the pastel paper. So um, this I loved. I actually quite loved doing it. I was really surprised. Um, my frustrations with it had to do with not having the right colors. I really, this is not finished. I'm going to actually go to the art store where they have nicer pastels in singles and get a couple of the light. I need some light, light purple and pale, pale pinks, uh, as well as a black uh, pastel in a pencil. I bought a pastel pencil set because you can get them in pencils. Some viewers had recommended and it was not cheap. It was, uh, you know, it was on the lower end, but it was still the same price as this was $15, $14 for like six pastel pencils. They were wretched, awful, 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 awful. I, you know, I used it to kind of put some greens at the top, but the main purpose was to make a really pretty tree right here. And I was not able to use the, them. I had to end up using the corner of the black. So it made a much 
thicker tree than the more delicate tree in the tutorial. Uh, so my frustrations weren't with the medium, it was again with uh, quality. So, you know, it's the same, these are pigments, so it's the same thing as watercolor, buy the best that you can buy, because otherwise you're not just fighting your learning curve, but you are fighting the medium or the the low quality paints or pigments uh, but i really enjoyed doing this it was very similar to painting because yes you would sketch it on loosely but then it was a lot to do with blending uh, in and it felt like painting and i quite loved it uh, and so I'm, I will definitely be getting some better, these are nice, these are nice for like they call it the undercoating because you can start out really, really dark in the background and then you start building light. So with watercolor, you're always working from light to dark. With uh, pastels, it's the opposite. You are building from dark to light and you can build light on top of it, which you really can't. It's very, it's different, but some of the things that I lear have been learning with uh, watercolors have applied in terms of blending and mixing. And so this is currently my newest thing. I'm still sketching and watercoloring every day, but I've kind of added, again, I was mostly a tester to see if Kate, and we are going to, in the fall, take this class on landscape pastels, because it's a, it's a medium she was really interested in, and I wanted to get a feel for whether I thought she would be interested in it, as well as what did I want to take a class with her. <laughs> so I find, yes, I do. I quite enjoyed it. Uh, for my very first attempt, I was happy with it, other than the tree, and that was frustration over the lack of the right tools. So, uh, yeah, so this is the other thing. Uh, I just have to say that in general, finding uh, a way to uh, art creatively fill your bucket, whatever that may be. Some people that's knitting, I knit for years. Crochet I knit, did for years. It, it agitates my carpal tunnel, but I love it. Anything that you can find, I think, that can creatively fill your bucket is, uh, I think, really important. And... Um, uh, it has been immensely healing and therapeutic for me to be doing this stuff that I never thought in a million years. You know, up until I first did, what I, I have to figure out what my, my first day I tried the watercolor, but just been maybe three months. Uh, up until that very day, I thought I wasn't capable of doing anything artistic. And I am still in the baby stages, but I at least feel like I can learn and I can accomplish something artistically. And that is a huge thing for me and I love it. So that's an update on my bullet journal and my artsy stuff. And I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, I hope that you take chances. You know, it's a piece of paper and it's, you know, this, this chance here cost me seven. I got this on sale as well, 50% off. And so seven, $12. So it was a Eleven dollars. Uh, it was eleven dollar chance, and it was well worth it because I actually find that I will love this medium. I think I can make some. It's very different than watercolor. You have more control than you have with watercolor. So I still watercolor is like my baby, but this is still a really fun medium and one that I will be doing more work with. It's very messy though. Your hands get filthy. Anyways, I'm gonna go. Thank you for watching.